Gathering, featuring work by Robert Martinez, Ben Peace, John Pepion, Holly Young, Gina Still Smoking, and Louis Still Smoking. This event and the weekend events are possible due to the wonderful support of our business sponsors, First Bank, Circular, Susie Ponce, with DA Davidson. We're so fortunate to have fabulous uh, neighbors that we do, the Wild Theater, where we can host our artist talk and the Best Western that helps us bring our artists here into the Sheridan community. Our friends tonight are provided by our great supporters, Verdello and uh, Cheesecake Squared. A huge thank you to my stage, the board of directors, and all of their continued guidance and help with putting this uh, ex exhibition and artist talk together. And of course, a giant thank you to my staff, Rachel Matthews and Sarah Johnson, for all of their time and effort to promote and bring this wonderful exhibition to Collective has been such an amazing group of artists to meet and to work with. The Collective is a group of professional Native American artists of the Northern Plains exploring identity, collective culture, and contemporary Native American life, and each artist has such a unique and beautiful approach to their work. With us this evening we have Ben Peace and Robert Martinez, and they will share about their collective and their work we will then uh, be able to do some Q&A, and we have uh, wonderful singers and prayer with us this evening also. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Ben and Robert. we ask blessings and we give thanks for all the things that, are, that, we, that we've given us. This is a good day for all of us. As the sun is out, the light is coming up around us. We had a good winter. Those of us that survived through it are here today. Those of us that are here are the ones that, are, that you brought here. We call us together. Look 
together the parts, but they were something that was created as clothing to keep us warm, to identify who we are and what we are. And in the process of doing that, we created in all of native culture, everybody was an artist. Everybody that beat, everybody that sing. And then created the war weapons. And they put their art and their life into it. And as you see these young men's <coughs> artwork, you'll see that you'll be able to see inside their what they are, what they brought in their heart, and who they are. And that's something that is hard to for everybody to do. But an artist has the ability to bring a part of themselves out and bring their work. So thank you for that because it shows us.
thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Ben Pease. I'm from Saga, Northern Cheyenne, and a bunch of other, a bunch of things. Um, obviously, I'm also confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the members, one of the founding members, as is Robert here of the Creative Indigenous Collective. Those who you all came to see tonight, we were the only two who were able to make it. Um, I guess, first of all, again, I'd like to thank my big brother Tom for coming to say a prayer. sort of uh, dissolved us uh, and we're happy to get back to that place and so this is a blessing it's a celebration right now I see this as, as celebrating while we still can because we don't know what tomorrow will bring so we hold all of you who came to support us so thank you for, for prayer I'm, I'm thankful for you know, my friend my brothers and everybody who came so um, Again, my name is Ben, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. Uh, geez, it was about three, four weeks ago, Jill and I were talking about what the show was going to be called, and I, you know, after doing shows and shows and shows, you kind of run out of titles. <laughs> so I said, and it's really fitting, uh, let's call it a gathering, because we're coming back together. Great show, show title. It just uh, in what Ben just said, it, it fits perfectly. So, uh, thanks again to everybody uh, for coming and uh, listening to us talk. And I have a couple of questions. First, Jill, did we charge everybody in here? <laughs> <laughs> and are we getting part of the cake? <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our art and what's really important. Why ain't that so hot? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about any. <laughs> um, I'm Robert Martinez. Uh, I'm from the Northern Rockwood Tribe, and I'm Chicano also. I'm from the Wind River Reservation in Central Wyoming. I've been a professional artist for over 20 years. Uh, I've shown all over the region as his band, and won some few awards as his band. And, uh, we started the Creative Indigenous Collective in 2000. I was here the year. 2014? Yeah, in, in 14, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, too, along with uh, the other members of the collective, found that there is a need for uh, authenticity in uh, Native art, and specifically Northern Plains Native art. We saw that it was hard for individual Natives to, to get their art out. We found that by coming together, we can use our individual um, contacts and, and grassroots uh, organizations to, to find and seek out venues to show our work. Uh, as many of you know, well, just by a, a show of hands, who, who's been to some specific contemporary Native art shows? That's more than I thought. <laughs> but it would be great if everybody said, yeah, a, a bunch of them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that was part of the reason we came together. And, and as a group, we found that our collective uh, contacts uh, uh, gave us other ways to, to give our artwork out to other audiences that we might not have. So that's what our collective is about. But not only are we doing that for just our collective, we bring back education to the community. So I'll be doing a demo Saturday if you want to check that out. Uh, we both do things in our communities with uh, other native artists, kids, public arts projects. So it's not just about us getting our artwork out there. We also push other native artists to get out there. 
uh, hey, we just had a show at the Sage. Can you guys go, go check that out? I'll, I'll try and get you in contact with you too. That's the type of stuff that the, the creator of the group is collecting. Okay. I think you got most of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess the Creative Indigenous Collective using uh, our, our resources as a group, as a tool, as a conduit to, to further a discussion about the lack of representation for indigenous art in this place. Everywhere that, that uh, we have a show, it's, it's like, quite literally, it's the first time there's ever been a contemporary Native American art show. And we're just operating here in the heart of the West. And that's, there's a lot of questions around that, so we have to ask why, right? Sheridan is, for me, right in the middle of the heart of the West. For other people, it's somewhere else, but for me, it's here. And Sheridan has a long history of bridges between Native culture and that which conquered it, some would say, or that which rose right alongside it. Um, I've heard stories from uh, loved ones that said here, even on Main Street, all over Sheridan, there's, there's signs on the windows that said, no Indians or dogs allowed. And I heard that's just a few decades ago. But look at, look at us now, right? We're here, we're celebrating what we do, we're speaking in our own terms, we're telling our own story. And the Creative Indigenous Collective, we're honored to do this because it's a huge responsibility for the generations to come. Robert has kids, I have kids. And those generations we're building, right? We're building our nations together. And uh, building those bridges is just as important, if not more important. So I'm honored to be here. So with that, we're gonna open it up for questions. We would like to, to help educate you or, or find out what your interests are about authentic Native art, at least via Ben and I. We, we, we can't answer questions for anybody else, just for, for him and I, but uh, we'll try. So, if anybody has any questions, yes? How do you define authentic? Everybody's probably been in a uh, contemporary gallery, right? You always see that one native guy on the horse, right? Chances are that's probably not painted by anybody, especially if it's got three or four zeros behind it. <laughs> <laughs> So authentic native art would be art created by an authentic native. Um, and that's usually not what you might expect. Um, I hope everybody gets a chance not just to listen to me blab and, and Ben carry on, but goes and listens to art. It's, it's adjusting your expectations of what authentic native art is. And it's just not just two dimensional art, um, and it's not uh, just uh, uh, beadwork, which is, art form in itself, or quilt work has been in many different contemporary uh, artisans like that. But there's native food, there's native chefs, right? there's native writers. Um, but unfortunately, we don't get the spotlight on us as much as we would like. And that's what we're about, is trying to change that. Yeah, authenticity, I can only echo Again, what Robert said, I guess having a relation to, to a living, breathing, active community. I heard a term recently, uh, and I think it's a, an anthropological term, but nobody kick me if I get it wrong. Uh, it was a descendant community of a cultural people. And I, I sort of have a, a trouble understanding what descendant community, I mean, it's, for me, it's it's like a static term. It's it's not living or breathing. It's not an organism. It, it was a once was. So, uh, for me, being authentic is is having a living representation in even in the living culture. If that makes sense. Uh, I did a painting a few years ago, just about what Robert was talking about, titled uh, "Indians on Horses in Their Natural Habitat." <laughs> And this painting, it was a, uh, it was an antique store find. And so that's one of the things that, that I do and Robert does as well, travel to antique stores to find beautiful things, things of the past. 
um, things that have come and gone. And uh, I found a painting that was that was done by a Western artist in maybe the in 1978 or something, pretty close to that. And I bought the painting. It was an original oil painting of a wildfire in the forest. And all I did to the painting is I painted text, oil paint text, Indians on horses in their natural habitat. Because as we go to every popular Western art gallery, traditional Western art gallery, Robert's right, Indian on a horse, in the river, in the forest, on a cliffside, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I just gave people what they're looking for. <laughs> this artist, I won't say his name, but he had painted Native Americans his whole career. And I couldn't find one time in looking, as good as, as, good as my Google skills are, um, that he ever had an impact on Native peoples. So his process, as I saw it, was extractive. He didn't give back in the way that we're taught. And uh, now, I'm not perfect, and I, I don't think anybody in this room is, but uh, I hope that that sort of helps you understand what authenticity to me means, I guess, and being an artist who is also indigenous, an artist who's um, not just inspired, but has a, has a connection, a bridge. That's the short answer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> really, it is. Uh, there's so many nuances. Uh, uh, so if you can't wrap your head around this, uh, a non-native artist painting or creating native imagery or symbols has a much longer and more lucrative career than an authentic Native artist creating authentic Native art. Did everybody understand that? You can walk into commercial galleries all over. And, uh, you can get more representation in the Southwest, but especially up here, all the Native imagery is almost all by non-Native artists. Authentic Native artists are pigeonholed even where they show, right? We can pigeonhole them into just trading posts, possibly, or, um, oh geez, there's that one native art gallery. So we're both artists. We just happen to be native. Ben does a beautiful collage work. He just happens to work with native themes. I do render pictures of people who happen to be native. We would rather be labeled as just contemporary artists rather than in this uh, one specific grouping. Well, that's a little that's a little tricky, isn't it? I mean, in, in graduate school, I had a, a friend, an African American student, very good painter, remarkable, and he would not join the African American artist group because he didn't want to be known as an African American. Or at least he wanted to be known as an artist. Mm -hmm. So that's tricky, isn't it? Well, this issue. It, it, it is. And I think it's more about our finished work, right, than our process or, or what we're actually doing. If we create and the end product looks like one particular genre, then we tend to kind of label that. Um, however, um, here's another thing to, to wrap your head around. I don't know if you had anything to say. All of those non-native artists painting non-native people, how many non-African American artists painting just African Americans? That's it, that's all they did. Have you, do you know of any? What about a non-Asian artist creating all Asian? Well, I'd have to say I do know some. Well, th there, there are some, I, I can name a few, but by far and large, it's way more accepted for a non-native artist to create nothing but native imagery, and that's okay. Um, most of those artists are phenomenal painters, phenomenal sculptors. However, why is that okay? And why is it okay for a collector to to say, "Wow, do you know any natives?" And, you know, the artist might say, "Yeah, I know like three." and then have a career spending 50 years of painting native people. You know, 
why, why is that excessive? Where should it change that? We would like to say, you know, if you're doing nothing but individuals and you do, you know, Asian person, uh, African American person, and Native person, and, you know, you have all kinds of people because you do people, that's, that's a different story. But, um, that's, that's one of the things that we're, we're trying to point out. Any other, any other question? Good evening, each and every one of you. My name is Sergio Maldonado. My mother is Ruth Frances Uma. My father is Andrew Maldonado. Truly an indigenous man from Iguapa, Jalisco. I live on the Wind River Reservation. I'm familiar with Mr. Martinez here and his work. With respect to authenticity, I think that we have to keep in mind that authenticity is always going to have one's own interpretation to it. So when I think of authentic Indian art, I'm hard pressed to say that do we truly have any authentic Indian artists today? Because that authenticity, as much as Ben has made mention, you are a part of that community. You live, you breathe, you practice ceremony within that community. People know who you are and you give back. I think of some of the early artists that were mentioned and Robert mentioned that he's aware of a whole lot and I'm sure he is. I think of Charles Bond who painted the basically landscapes, but some tribal people, and Charlie Russell, he was one. But today's contemporary Indian artists are people who are from that community, and what distinguishes, in my interpretation, an authentic Indian artist, whether it's, it's mixed blood, I am mixed blood. I participated in our tribal ways, our lodge ways, this year be 40 years. So I've been a part of all of that under the tutelage of a lot of good tribal men, elders. So this authenticity is gonna be impacted by today's world. And I'm glad that you made mention about this, this coronavirus because that has affected the mindset of the world. But yet as tribal people, we've always known that at some point in time, even my grandpa Tony Wolfgang told me about this, my grandma Marguerite, uh, Spoon Hunter Ward, she says when that coyote lands on the moon, things will change. I was in about seventh grade when she told me that. Then Brother Armstrong landed on the moon and he says this, those famous words, the eagle has landed. And since that time I woke up, the scales were removed from my eyes. Tribal people are beyond exponentially further marginalized in this nation called America. Further marginalized, now we look at the artists who are trying to recreate the story, the picture of who we, we, possess a plural, were, but we have to focus on who are we now. And through your artwork, you're trying to share that. I had to muse when you said that you can have this scads of, geez, real red talk. You can have just a whole lot of people who are making big bucks, not even tribal, painting tribal. But yet as tribal artists, you're marginalized not only by America, but within your own community. Because you will have tribal people who will say, well, Serge, you shouldn't really be writing about this or talking about this. You don't want to step out of the norm. But that norm from a very paternalistic government Bureau of Indian Affairs, BIA, has subjugated tribal peoples to the point of even our artists have to be aware of how far can you push that brush. Lest you 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 bring the condemnation down on you. And still you try to provide for your family. Tribal artists have been exponentially marginalized within America and within our own communities called reservations. It's neither good, bad, or indifferent. It is what it is. That sun still comes up for me every day, and I'm thankful. We had pipe fast just last week for our lodge coming up on July 13th, Rabbit Lodge or Sundance Lodge. Ceremony still goes on in light of the suppressions. But what's radically different, and here's where artists push that, not push the envelope, writers push the envelope. Artists push the brush. That's my take. Very true, very true. That's my take. Look at our ceremony, how it has been impacted radically, significantly from what it used to be. Now we drive our vehicles to the ground, use chainsaws to take down the timber for the lodge, 
to the lift to pick up those big timbers when I go up to the mountains with them to load them on and then they bring them back. Everything is, is within the condition of modernity and even our tribal ways have been subjected to that. Not that we didn't want it, it just is what it is. A couple years ago, or many years ago, I had to ban cell phones on the ground because people, even tribal people, were taking pictures of them. The dancers. It had to stop. And then pandemic, we couldn't even get up to the lodge. We sat a distance away from it. And everybody had to verify that you've been COVID-19 free, you've had a, you know, whatever. Myself, COVID-19 negative 13 times as of yesterday because I work at the casino, I work with a lot of people. But what I'm saying is that art has been impacted as radically as tribal people have, as radically as American people <coughs> have, because yes, we have authentic American people. Nobody can escape that notion called authenticity because every one of you are special. Every one of you have an authenticity about you. Every one of you have a lineage that is worth sharing because we're all children of that one old man, that messy one, that old man. All children of one God. That's what I've learned in my short tenure, I'm sure. But it's all good. Appreciate you, both of you, coming on out. I saw a word of it. It didn't happen on the Mocks and Telegraph. I saw it on the <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so That's how it's changed. I was busy with a colleague, Michael Yellowbird, mm. Jackson Lake, Saturday. <coughs> Lots of work from him. We talked about exactly this. Where is it going to be when your children are your age? You're a young man. You're only, what, 22? <laughs> uh, 22 years ago. <laughs> Things are radically changing, and it's, it, it is affecting everybody for the good, however you want to construct it. Regardless, life is good. I appreciate your efforts. I just want to say a few words. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. And as you can see, these these conversations they, they get uh, off on one thing, and then it, it's so similar to other things, right? Um, one thing I'd like to mention is that uh, you know Ben's from one tribe, I'm from another tribe, and uh, native art, especially by non-natives, that gets pushed into one Indian theme. But we're different as as, as Germany is from France. People tend to forget that, that there were over 500 nations on, on these lands as well, you know, America. Um, and they, they were all different. They all had their different languages. They all had different customs, dress. They all had different things that meant something to them. And then they were different from another tribe. But we get this idea of the, of the Indian. And I'm pretty sure everything is uh, either in Utah or in the mountains. And everybody's wearing the same headdresses, right? But it's not like that. Yes, question. Can I ask on that train of thought, how many different regions, tribes, or groups are represented in your collective at this point in time? We have seven members presently, and five nations total. Well, I'm, I'm at least five. <laughs> 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 I'm also, I'm also a little bit German and uh, uh, Cornish, so I celebrate that as well. I think you mean Cornish. Wow. Cornish. <laughs> Star, some of you might have heard of his, his work. Uh, it's been around a little bit here and there. Uh, I was also inspired by um, Robert Martinez. <laughs> no, but I guess growing up on the, on the reservation, I really never knew that I could be an artist um, until I saw somebody like Kevin Redstar or, or another native artist or my aunt, uh, Angela, putting out 
sort of like you know, like an arts council or even um, other things, opportunities for artists, for, for creative people. I really didn't know that you could sell a painting and make, make a living, you know. I didn't know that you could travel and speak. I just was never exposed to these things. And so uh, that's kind of where my conception came from. My mom, who's here, mom, Linda Peace, somewhere, <laughs> she left me. <laughs> she's here. Um, it's her birthday yesterday, so happy birthday, mom. Uh, she took me to one of my first art shows, and I just, I was in a whole new world, and, and I've talked about this story quite a bit already. Uh, but walking into this art show, I, I just, it was a Western art show in Great Falls, Montana, and there was, a, a, you've heard of the Charlie Russell art group, right? A little bit. Uh, and so walking in there as, as a young kid, I saw people, non-native people in buckskin shirts, and I saw a, a guy with long white hair that who wasn't native. He was wearing a, a, a war shirt with ermine skins and, and full moccasins, and I had his hair braided, a feather in his hair, sitting at his booth selling art. And I was so confused, to be honest, I didn't really know what, what was happening because coming from my tribal community, um, I knew what was real, but I knew that that wasn't real. It wasn't me or anybody else that I'd ever seen. So that was my first conception of art. It's really shaped my path in the past 25 years or 20 years or something like that, I guess. So um, that's how my art came to be, and it's, it's still growing. Uh, probably, you want to talk about me? Sure, I'll talk about me. I like talking about me. Uh, I was uh, blessed with the uh, artistic talent. I didn't know that until I was older, but you know, I was one of the kids that was always writing on the walls. It got in trouble a lot. Um, and then I really got in trouble in high school for spray painting on the wall. Um, uh, but I had some great art teachers who saw my talent and they took me aside and they gave me a little bit more attention. Um, but I never thought that it was something that I could do for a living, just like like Ben. We have I had no artistic role models, although there are artistic great artists on our reservation. Uh, one of them uh, being uh, one of the co-founders of the Northern Arapaho Artist Society, which I, I had co-founded. Uh, his name is uh, Eugene Bridgley, who's one of my art teachers. He was the one I first saw doing public art, doing something that I was like, wow, you know, he did a big, big mural at the school at the at St. Stephen's Union School. He did a big mural on the wall. I remember. Just being flabbergasted that he could do that. But I never thought he could make a living. So um, I took art class. I never took it serious. But luckily, I had a uh, high school art teacher who challenged me and, unbeknownst to me, uh, put me in for some scholarships and uh, for the Wyoming State Arts Department. And I won a lot of them, which blew me away. So all of a sudden, I had choices. Right. So I went to Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. They gave me the biggest amount of money closest to home. Um, I could have went to Savannah, Georgia, and now I think about it, I wonder how the art would have been different if I went to Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I studied my butt off. I became the youngest native artist at that time. I don't know if I still have this record, but I graduated with a BA at 19. Uh, I don't remember sleeping. You know, <laughs> um, and then after that, I uh, was a professional artist, but in tandem with working for my tribe, working with Native youth, because it's very hard to be a professional artist, let alone a Native professional artist, let alone a Native professional artist in Wyoming. <laughs> just, just being a, a, a Wyoming artist is tough. <laughs> being a Montana artist is tough, so. Luckily, I've, 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 uh, I've had a, a following and, and have been able to do this, and for the past 10 years, been able to do it and, and uh, pay the bills and feed my family. Other questions? Yes? Yeah, you guys uh, spoke about your influences and sort of the origin of becoming artists. How have you noticed your art change over the course of your career? You know, I have uh, noticed my change is that I used to look up to different artists, especially 
uh, this is going to sound horrible, especially a lot of those non-native artists that painted native people, <laughs> because they're really good. I, I'm not, a lot of those painters are awesome, but the way they painted and who they painted influenced me. Um, however, I stopped looking up to them and figured out, you know, I want to do something just to be different. I want to do what I want to do. And really, that's when you find your voice as an artist, when you stop. When something around you spurs you on, it's great. But when you say, yeah, that's great, but I got, I got a better idea that I can do something, that's when your art really takes off in your home. And especially if you're in the company of other great artists who do the same thing, right? Um, that spurs me on. That's what inspires me now. Yeah, I am the same way. Um, my first show in Sheridan was at the, the depot, the, the train station here. And that was the first time I'd ever seen Robert's work and I was blown away. And uh, the first thing I thought, there's, there's another native artist in this area. <laughs> And uh, I think literally that was my first show. Do um, you remember that? No? Do you? No? I do, because I saw his work and I went, wow, I can yeah. work with this guy. 